welcome students this is one of the lectures from the series of the lectures and topics in business statistics and statistical inference and in this lecture we will be talking about the dichotomization of continuous variables so let's see what this is about it's an interesting topic in first uh, section we will discuss the theory related to it the concepts regarding the dichotomization of the continuous variable and in the next phase we will see that how we can practically do this thing using the sps software so the learning outcomes that we have in combination of the both phases that i just discussed include dichotomous variables converting to dichotomous variables median splitting disadvantages problem what to do and working on spss so we will first start with the dichotomous variable by, by dichotomous variable we mean categorical variables uh, namely they are nominal and ordinal which only have two categories so these are the variables which which have basically two categories we can have variables having multiple categories but particularly if we want to have variables with just two categories then those are called dichotomous variables for example gender is a dichotomous variable if it has only two categories for example male and female rank is a dichotomous variable if it has only two categories for example pass and fail color can be a dichotomous variable if it has only two categories for example black and white above are all the examples of nominal dichotomous variables but there can be ordinal dichotomous variables too and we must remember the difference between the nominal and ordinal measurement scales nominal are just the labels given to the variables so that they can be differentiated and nothing more information is present in them but ordinal are above uh, uh, the name given because they also include the order among the variables the rank among the variables so they, they include some more information than the nominal so rank is a dichotomous variable if it has only two categories showing some order then it will be that dichotomous belonging to the ordinal type for example excellent and good now there is some order present between excellent and good there is a rank present between excellent and good speed is a dichotomous variable if it has two categories with some order for example fast and faster color is also a dichotomous variable if it has two categories with some order for example bright and brighter so it's up to the data analyst that how he defines or how she defines their variables i mean we can have categorization as nominal we can have categorization for ordinal it all depends at what information we are trying to represent and how we are trying to represent it so converting to dichotomous variables measures of position are a common approach to do this right for example a binary split or median splitting is also very commonly used by median splitting data is split such that values to one side of median belong to first category and values to the other side of median belong to the second or the other category the searcher can decide where to put the values which are lying on the median position now in your basic course of statistics you have studied the measures of positions and i want you to recall this thing that measures of positions basically include those measures by which we can find the values in the data set at particular positions or at particular locations primarily they include the percentiles quartiles and decimals they are the easiest and most commonly available parameters for the measures of position a common argument is that it greatly simplifies the statistical analysis and leads to easy interpretation and presentation of results now what is the advantages of doing this basic argument that the data analysts put forward is that that once you categorize your variable where, where previously it was not in categorization mode 
then it becomes easy for interpretation and it becomes easy for presentation of the results as well so like for example if there are let's say 50 values and uh, the 50 values can be classified or can be categorized into three categories right so it would be better to classify it in this way because it's difficult to present 50 values rather than just three categories now we just talked about the binary split and let's see what does it mean a binary split for example at the median leads to a comparison of groups of individuals with high or low values of the measurement leading to the simplest case to a t-test or chi-square test and an estimate of the difference between the groups now what we do in binary split the word binary means two so this basically means that dividing your data set directly into two categories and this can be easily done by any measures of precision but the a common method which is used to do it is by means of the median because we know that median is the central location or the middle value of the data set and it can easily divide the data set into two equal halves whatever case you use whether you use the median splitting or whatever positions you want to use the thing is this that once you have two categories then you have the data set in a form that it can be used for further analysis like for example it can be used for two sample t-test because now you have got two samples so it can be used for a two sample t-test case or for a chi-square test, test case however there is no good reason to in general to suppose that there is an underlying dichotomy and if one exists there is no reason why it should be at the beginning now this is a very very important Sometimes people think, data analysts think that we can just categorize any data set. I mean, whatever the values are there, you can just split it into categories. But it's very important for a data analyst, as I always say, to understand your data. If there is some presence of categorization, if there is some reason of categorization, then this should be done otherwise if you do the categorization when there is no need of it then this can lead to very dangerous interpretations very wrong interpretations very big errors and secondly there is there should be some reason that what you are using for splitting if you are using median value for splitting then there should be a proper reason for it it's not always that you 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 are bound to use the median splitting for dividing your data set into equal into two parts or two categories. The disadvantages. Statistics is a subject that basically involves data representation and data analysis. When we talk about the statistics, we talk about a lot of things. We talk about data collection. We talk about the um, data representation. We talk about summarization of the data. We talk about analysis of the data. And furthermore, we talk about characterization of the system, we talk about prediction, forecasting, and talk about the inferences, inferential part of the statistics, and a lot more. Basically, whatever we do with this in the, the, the statistics, we do two things one is the representation part, and one is the data analysis part. So, the thing is that whatever you do in the statistics, you should know that you are doing it just for representation. Or you're doing it just for analysis or you're doing it for proof might have been so that something some method of working might be good for representation but it might not be very useful for analysis and that's what happens in median splitting cases as well mostly they are related to each other but really they do not support each other categorization of continuous variables is one such of cases one such rare case where the representations do not support the analysis might be grouping or categorization categorizing may help in data representation particularly in tables but this does not help much in data analysis it can even cause incorrect conclusion conclusions so here we consider the impact of converting continuous data into two groups and as this is the most common approach in the research. 
Dichotomizing leads to several problems. We must know these problems. Firstly, much information is lost. So the statistical power to detect a relation between the variable and outcome is reduced. And we know that when statistical power is reduced, then this leads to type two, more type two errors. That is increasing the risk or the probability of false positive errors. Indeed, dichotomizing a variable at the median reduces power by the same amount as would discarding a third of the data. Deliberately discarding data is surely inadvisable when research studies already tend to be too small. And what we mean by this is, suppose we have some like 250, 300 values and we want to dichotomize them into two categories, then definitely there is a lot of variation present among, there might be a lot of variation present among the values because there are a lot of them. And then we are dichotomizing them into two categories, then this might not be a good way because there could be multiple categories present because there are a lot of variations present in them. There could be a second case as well that we have few values, like let's say we have eight values, but there are a lot of variations in them. In that case as well, if we dichotomize them, if we dichotomize them into two categories, then this might not be a very useful thing to do. Secondly, one may seriously underestimate the extent of variation in outcome between groups, such as risk of some event, and considerable variability may be subsumed within each group. Individuals close to but on opposite sides of the cut point are characterized as being very different, but they are very, very similar. This is another very important thing to understand. When we cut the variable into equal halves, or when we cut the variable into two categories, then those individuals or those values which are very close at the boundary value or very close at the cut point value, definitely they would be, there's a high probability that they are very similar to each other. But since they have been categorized, so they are in two opposite portions now, right? Like when a country gets independence, when a country is separated or split into two parts, then those which are living at the borders have close, have close um, affinities towards each other. But those which are far apart from the border do not have very close affinities towards each other. Thirdly, using two groups conceals any non-linearity in the relation between the variable and outcome. After learning the three major disadvantages of dichotomization, it is understandable that major problem is where to cut the data or your cut point. For a few variables, there are recognized cut points. In absence of prior cut point, the most common approach is to take the sample medium. Use of this so-called optimal cut point, usually that gives maximum uh, p-value, runs a high risk of a seriously significant result. The difference in the outcome variable become between the groups will be overestimated, perhaps considerably, and the confidence interval will be too narrow. So what to do in this case? If we have to categorize the data set or our variable dichotomously, then a good way is to categorize it firstly into three categories. And this is a this is a very important point to understand that how we can categorize into two categories. So what what what's a feasible approach to do is is to categorize firstly it into three categories and then remove the middle one first. So this would create sort of a buffer between our extreme categories and remove any similarities present that could be present between our dichotomous categories. A second approach is to instead of categorizing continuous variables, we prefer to keep them continuous. We could then use linear regression rather than a two sample t test. For example, if we were concerned that a linear regression would not truly represent the relation between the outcome and the predictor variable, we could explore whether some transformation would be helpful. So, second thing which we are talking about over here is this that if categorization is not possible to do so, or if, you, if for any reason we cannot do the categorization then we can use linear regressions as well, which is also a good way to find the relationship between the variables in a linear fashion. And, uh, but 
definitely near regression has its assumptions to be first confirmed about the data set and most importantly the data set should be either and normal so we can use the transformation techniques too so but we'll not talk about this thing over here we'll see that how we can categorize the variables as it is discussed in the first part of the slide that is if you want to split into two then we first split into three and then split into two so let's understand this thing that what do we mean by it? whatever so far we have discussed about categorization in a nutshell we will try to understand this using this example so what we see is this that we have some data set which are shown over here as colored dots and we can see that if we split this data set in the middle which is this breakpoint, then these two values are very similar to each other. They are so similar to each other that they are difficult to be distinguished, right? So splitting over here at the middle point and then categorizing this as one category and categorizing this as the other category, those which are close to the cut point are very similar and putting them into different categories does not make much sense right but those which are far away from the split point are fairly different from each other so splitting into two categories by median splitting or by one split point is not a feasible method that's what we were talking about but over here we can see that again two categories are being made but making use of the two splits one break point is over here and second break point is over here and over here we can see that the, the dots that are on the left hand side of this breakpoint one and on the right hand side of this breakpoint two are fairly different from each other. And those which are in the middle portion can be close, but we're not concerned with them now. So our approach will be this one that to, to, to dichotomize the continuous variable. We will first categorize it into three and then split it into two. And this we will do practically using the SPSS. So the next phase, the next section of this lecture, we will uh, be looking into this example. And the, the theme of this example is taken from this online available lecture from another professor. And we will uh, maneuver it to our case. Uh, so divide the question is that we have to divide the respondents into three levels of satisfaction low medium and high and take only high and low for further analysis so there's some variable available to us in the form of satisfaction we have to categorize it into three levels first namely low medium and high and take only high and low for further analysis so first so after categorizing into three we have to split it into two so thank you very much students. This is the end of this uh, section. And in the next section, you will see that how we can do this thing using SPSS software practically. So thank you very much.